Hello, homeschoolers. I'm in Lebanon, Tennessee, down in the square, the main square. And uh, hey, guys, look where I'm at. Look what I'm doing. Look at this old building. This is the site of the new Groom Guitars factory. You guys recognize this? Down the highway, ripping at about 4 a.m. This is my old friend Moose. Moose. What's up, buddy? I'm doing good, my friend. Yes. Yeah, great. Good morning, guys. All right, look at this. What the hell? What's up, my friend? Yeah. Oh, it smells good, don't it? Yeah, it smells good in here. How you doing, bro? Jay Meyer. Good to see you. Nice to meet you, Tommy. Well, Tommy. Welcome to our factory. Love it, man. This is fantastic. Great. This place is dope, man. Isn't it cool? Yeah. They've been working hard on it. Uh, uh, these guys are cooking. You gonna give them the tour, Jay? You should. Sure, I'll do it. You should. Look yeah. at you. You got to look for it. Remember. Give them to me. <laughs> How about you guys both give us the tour? Let's do it, man. Boy, it sure smells good in here. Yeah, he's cutting some uh, sweet teeny macrophilia, which uh, is mahogany. Man. So check it out. When was this building built? 1937. No shit. Same year, the best T28s were ever produced by Martin Guitar. 1937, so you nice. know good guitars are coming out of here. Yeah, uh, yeah. When George Gruen heard it was built in 1937, that was what sealed the deal. He's like, "Get that place." It's like, "Yes, yeah. sir, not a problem." So, so we so, made uh, it happen. Have you heard Greg and I's new term, uh, vintage guitar term? You know, vintage guitar terms are always great. We call the old Gibson Wood Honduran hog. Honduran hog. You yeah. Heard about that? Yeah. <laughs> I have heard that from him. Yes. I like, the way, I, like, I like the way you made it up a couple of weeks ago and you're like, you heard about that, bro? You heard about that? That's funny. I'm you doing doing all because you're definitely going to have to edit some of this. I'll tell you that. But my wife, my wife works on guitar too. She does all the sanding here. Yeah. We, I'm doing hard. Yeah, we call it uh, Mahog. Yeah, you know? Mahog. Yeah. What's this fella doing over yeah. here? He's the head luthier here. What he's doing right now is cut the sides to its profile. Nice. And then from there we'll go ahead and bend them. You'll have a little extra inch on the top. That's your okay? Yeah. Watch your fingers. Oh yeah. Watch your fingers, AJ. Watch your fingers, man. Have you ever seen anything like this? I have never seen I have to be careful because when they call me Moose, I, it's not my fingers. I have to be I'd be careful. careful. What are you you're not doing it? <laughs> oh, man. I got a feeling this man is using the saw before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I got a feeling. All right, Greg, what else we got? What else? Check out all this lumber. Oh, yes. Look at that, man. So Look this is 12 quarter genuine mahogany. This right here is Coco Bolo, cut down in about 1976. Right. This one's brought into the country as well. Very old. The Jimmy style. Carter era. Yeah, yeah. We got some really heavy duty sapele at the bottom. That's really nice. good for necks, blocks, right. really resonates well. Yeah. Uh, that's the most dense of all the mahoganies. Um, What's the most bullshit guitar wood of all time? What is the most bullshit guitar wood of all time? That's a great question. For me personally? How Pharaoh? I'd say, I'd say maple. Honestly. Maple? I don't think maple is really that great of a sound guitar for acoustics. But the electric guitar will capitalize on it because it's nice and stiff and strong. Right. And really what they're picking up is pickups. It's not the internal sound. You know, we're talking solid body Gibson right. and Fender. Uh, yeah. I think like what maple costs right. are for like your figure. It, it, it's unbelievable yeah. to me compared to when I was buying it for Martin Guitar 18 years ago right. versus what it costs now. It just it blows my mind. Right. Uh, that's so this wood right here is 60 years old. Some of this wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. You know, my uh, mother, need... my mother bought a brand new two-door Olds Cutlass in 1976, seven thousand dollars. Holy shit! 1976. Yeah. That takes. That shows you where this wood was doing. Yeah. Back then, seven thousand dollar Cutlass. This stuff, I've watched Coco Bolo go from about a hundred and fifty dollars a set. Today, it's like. Uh, for a good set, like three fifty, four hundred dollars a set. Yeah, man. Here's some domestics. This is ash that fell down in uh, Nashville, East Nashville. One of George Gruen's friends. It's a huge ash tree. So I sent a crew out. They recovered it. 
sent over to my buddy around the corner. He dried it for us. Right. This tree literally fell about six weeks ago, and it is ready to be produced in the cars. And that quick of a fashion. We're putting the car before the horse here. These, I'm making a video. These people don't even know what this factory is for. So can you explain it? Yeah, come on, let's go in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, don't record that. Don't record that? Yeah, yeah. We don't even we don't even notice that. Man, look at this, man. This is killer. You got the office here. Yeah. You gotta check out that uh that room that was built out. It's amazing. Okay. There's a lot that takes place, side bending. Fucking okay, amen. Alright, here we are. You guys you recognize these guitars, don't you, homeschoolers? Yes, sir. Uh, so this is one of the first guitars I built in about a decade. George came to me with this opportunity to start factory. Obviously, we went, we didn't want to dive in and just do it right away. So we did 20 protos through a local small guitar shop here outside of Nashville. Proto, is that short for something? Prototyping. <laughs> Making sure we had something that was great, something that was going to sell, okay. something that was going to catch a little yeah. bit of a fire, yeah. if you will. <laughs> but uh, George originally designed these through Tacoma. Like okay. you see here, this is a There's base the Tacoma. I used to have a Thunder Chief years ago. Yeah, yeah. God, they were great sounding. This guy here is a, a papoose. That's, is that an old one or a new one? That's an old one. That's okay. the first one. The first oh, one? Yeah, that's his original design. Damn. And wow. then... Someone told me that the old ones are worth a fortune. They're worth a, a bit of money. I mean, yeah. not, I wouldn't say a fortune, but... Yeah. You, you, Did you make those original ones? Did you make those? No, I didn't. I wasn't around when those okay. were built. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, I was very young. Yeah. So I made this. Okay. The only uh, changes that are made uh, now that it's in production is it has a bound top. Back. Right. And it has an access panel on the back. And on the back yeah, so one of the biggest things that we were racking our brain on yes. is how are we going to get in this guitar to A, fix it if a brace popped loose or broke, um, right. and or electronics? Because right. a lot of right. players might not like what I like or what Greg likes or what. You like, it, right? So the only access hole at this point is this little shirt right. bottle. Right. 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 When you when you actually have not to interrupt you. I'm no, sorry, you're good. You're good. When you actually have a sound hole on it, um, you can work inside of the instrument in its entirety through the sound hole. If you have uh, f holes, two smaller f holes on either side, you can do the same thing, and that's cool. But you're not going to wind up installing under the saddle transducer pickups and an arch top with f holes in that point. Right. You know, so on something like this, because we knew that a lot of pickups were going to be installed, we made it so that half the instruments coming off the production line are going to have an electronics package, and that would be great. But if someone wants to add that package after the fact, we can't, you know, we can't have luthiers being experimental with how to install pickups, and we can't do every single pickup install on the instruments that we sell. So these guys, AJ and, 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 and Jay, went ahead and. Uh, did a really smart system, which you'll see on the production models of a of a door that comes off, that you can actually put your hand all the way in to do all the repairs needed for bracing, clamping, mm -hmm. whatever yeah. you have. And it looks amazing. I, I think yeah, I it's really shot. clean. It allows you know repairmen, luthiers to get in there, do what they have to with either installing electronics. You know, things happen. You know, people right. don't always humidify their guitars right, so they'll crack something, they'll crack the seam, or mess up the, the, the bridge plate so you need to get it in there and that was the number one thing we started on when we got here was how are we going to access this and that's how we came yeah. over this thing's so good it's good uh, and that would is that it's not even a year old yet um, that was last summer i built that last july or august so try it out moose see what it's got give us a couple give us a little hang junior get some older strings up yeah <laughs> All my ruddy friends are coming over tonight. It's way too low. <laughs> Dude, it's very witty. Nice. Very witty nice. Yeah, man. Nice, man. So you built that one? Yeah. I did the body, my wife did the neck. Right. That's awesome, man. So when is this all this shit going to be ready to go? I know we're still in the early stages. We are in the early stages, but for three, three and a half months, we are really happy to be where we're at. 
Uh, a lot of stuff had to come and fall into place. I mean, literally the last machine is supposed to come in today. We are processing parts. We're um, you know, getting inventory numbers right. up. Uh, we'll be processing bodies next week and next by the end of the week. Nice. Um, actually, you guys will probably see the real first run of four necks at one time on our CNC machine. Uh, we've been working um, on that this whole last week. Where are these guitars going to be available? And what are these guitars going to be called? Do you mind if I pick this? It's a great question. Or oh, have a look. Get on it. The, um, it's the George Groom, uh, his model of instruments. This has been his baby for 30, 40 years. 40, 40 years. He's owned the design patents uh, ever since uh, he designed them for Tacoma. Um, so he really believes in the instrument, and we do as well because it sounds they're amazing. Um, Groom Guitars is going to have all of them. Start. Um, we should have instruments by the 15th. So by mid to by middle of June, they will be available for sale. I would imagine by the last week of June, we should have and at available 15th and uh, 30th on the website. On the website and at store. At the store. What can men expect to pay for a guitar like that? Like a full size. Uh, it'll cushion. be it'll be under $2,500 right. with electronic package and a right. case. Right. Nice. Yeah, we wanted to really dial in the price point with these instruments to have it be the one you reach for. That's sure. really versatile and you really don't have to worry about it. Uh, yeah, that's sweet, right? So what's really cool about the Papoose is it is a full, it's not a full scale length, obviously, but the barrel of the neck is full. It doesn't feel like a travel guitar. It certainly doesn't sound like a travel guitar. And a lot of musicians love it. When they were in production at Tacoma, it was over 5,000 of them they sold in a short amount of time. It was like a wildfire, but unfortunately, Tacoma went out of business and the old dream kind of got put on hold for George. So are you going to make those again? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be doing my job as a, as a wood connoisseur if I wasn't utilizing the entire gamut of wood for large basses, baritones, all the way down to something small like a, a papoose. Because... Sure. Sometimes you get to the end of a stick or, or a, you know, a piece of wood, and you can't get that full 25 and a half scale length. Right. But I can definitely get a 14.2. I also just want to mention here that um, Jay Meyer, he's been, you've been involved in this for a much longer period of time than the factory has been here. That's correct. You know, um, which which is dynamite. I mean, what I want to say is when this three three and a half months ago was a shell. Yeah. I remember coming through and you were still getting all the power tools and, and sourcing your, your wood, your suppliers, so on and so forth. We're at a point right now, three months from having everything. Yeah. Done. yeah. Everything. That, we'll take a walk down into the, the assembly room. room. Yeah, man. Yeah, which that, is like a, it's basically a giant human door, is yeah. what it is. Because when you get wood this thin, you know, an eighth of an inch or under, right. It's so susceptible to humidity, as you see, I have a dehumidifier in the office here, mm -hmm. because it's important even as guitars get put together that they maintain that humidity level. Yeah. Same thing as when you're building them. So that yeah. room is designed to keep it at 50% humidity look, look year at, round. Let's go check it out. It, it's badass. It's awesome. It's awesome. Let's check it out. I mean, to get it to this point, yeah, it is, man. It looks like a lot of uh, money was spent on it. On the tools, man. There's a lot of everything that was. Yeah, spent, dude. You know? But it's moving along really well. Really yeah. Happy. Dude, look at this. Following you around, bro. Man, it smells good in here. Oh, yeah. We, got, we just mm. got a uh, delivery of East Indian Rosewood two days ago, so that's what you're really smelling. Dude. It's just getting rid of some of the moisture gain coming across the ocean. Uh, but it should be ready in about three weeks. Yeah, um, I wish the smell was like a candle you could buy. Tell me about it. Whoa. So in here we have the air filtration system that's pushing against this wall. So all this stickered material here, we call it stickering. It's literally putting a layer of sticks in between each layer so air can get in there and just get the equilibrium moisture content to 6 to 8%. That yep. window is really where you want the wood to be. The EMC. Yep, that's right. So then over here we have the dehumidifier that pulls the air this way. So it's a constant flow around the room of the air moving. Um, if we get to a point where maybe the humidity gets too high, what we do is 
Again, I've thought this through for it's probably a year, drawing stuff and figure this out. This here is dust collection for this downdraft table, but it also has a filter on it, so it'll suck any impurities out of the air. So we turn this sucker on and it'll pull the air around the room even more. So it, you can sand on this table to suck all the fine dust down and in. Oh. So you just don't have a bunch of dust flying everywhere. I see. That'd be really bad for the person. I was wondering, like, there. Look, yeah, it's all, all dust goes in these holes. Yeah. 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 And we'll plug up more of these, and it'll just be like one small workstation for one Ooh. person here. And one person here kind of working shoulder to shoulder. Right, right. And that's how you get your best vacuum. Yeah, um, my kids would love that. Yeah. That looks like a fun game to play. That's Without super that. cool, man. Awesome. Whose guitar is this? That's uh, Bruin Manufacturing, actually. A gentleman wow. came in with it. And I phoned George and he said, just buy it. I said, okay. Nice. Very that's cool. That's a 1924 single 018. So, uh, what's all this shit over here? This is a vacuum stand, flip the switch, you put your body, your guitar body right on here and it'll suck there and stay there as long as the power stays on. <laughs> really? Um, oh yeah, yeah. It's pretty strong. You put a body right up against it? Yep. And then you don't have to clamp it or nothing? No. Now it's just air right here and then this gasket around. Crazy. Can you show us? Um, yeah. AJ, come here. Can you show this real quick? Yes, sir. I never, really, I never, I never seen such a damn thing. I can probably figure it out. Sorry to interrupt you, bro. Oh, you're, oh, you're fine, yeah. brother. No. Yeah. We're just, we're just amazed by this modern technology. Well, it's black magic is what it, you know, <laughs> what it all crazy. comes down to. What do they call that thing? What's the name for it? Uh, vacuum vice or pan of ice. Uh, it's got, it's got several names. So you, so you've got a valve on the back that either shuts the air off or lets it in. Take your body. About a half second. Going going on. On. You can sand, scrape, route dovetails, do do whatever. You cannot pull it off. I mean, I probably could if I root down. No. Yep. And you would have. You would no, you'll, break, no, you'll pull the top off first. Break section go back here. Huh, yeah. 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 You literally would pull the top off first, trying to get up. I'll bet Greg can pull it off, man. <laughs> Give it a shot. <laughs> this is pretty amazing. This is so, I mean, like, that, I mean, I know nothing about this, so forgive the completely idiotic question. Sure. Doing it that way is better than just... Holding it? Hold, I yeah. guess so. If you have it there, what would be the old way of doing this? Uh, the old way would either be clamps on the bench right here. To, hold, to hold it somehow, or, right. uh, or they had what's called a trogy. It's a, one like of these. A, Big foam. Right, and that would just smash yeah. the door, right? Yeah. 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 Or you could use a big vise. Mm -hmm. Those amazing. are typically used for necks That's now. Really amazing. Yeah. How cool this room looks. Isn't that awesome? Well, well, yeah, we got. We did this. Place, yeah. We did this in six weeks. We built this room. We had a contractor tell us it was going to take four months and about eighty-five thousand dollars, and it took us six weeks and about twenty-four thousand. Jesus. Can we can we mention that contract name? <laughs> <laughs> what do we got here? Run them out of town. So up here we have uh, a bunch of Brazilian rosewood, uh, Dalberger Nagra, um, fingerboards and bridges that I've been sitting on for oh god, probably a dozen years or so. So these are going to be made for special clientele and also um, people associated with Groom Guitars right. slash Groom Manufacturer. So, so when you inlay, just make it say Uncle Larry. Uncle Larry. Right up there. Cool. No doubt. You can do anything. <laughs> I can do anything. One of my uh, one of my good buddies, he runs Pearlworks. He owns Pearlworks up in Maryland. Yeah. So yeah. he would love to help us out in any capacity. Oh. This stuff is crazy jet black because this is the rare uh, East Indian ebony. Wow. Which isn't easy to get out of the country. Thus, I mean. See, this is this is the ebony that, that, that I always talk about. Oh, this is the black. This is the cat's This is it. This is this what is everybody it. wants. Typically, your Gaboon and Cameroon it. ebony would be about twelve dollars a fingerboard. Right. This will run you today about eighty-five to a hundred dollars a board. Yeah. Usually, the, the ebony that people are using nowadays is pretty pale. Yeah, it's got cream color in yep. it. Um, 
you know, some when people are running with it. Well, some people are not dying. The thing is, if you're like crazy about conserving the, the wood and all that, really it's like one out of 10, maybe two out of 10 trees of, of ebony are actually black. Most of them are gonna be that cream color. And it's always been that way, but you know, musical grade is a little different than the furniture grade. So when they would, they, they would drill into the tree, see if it was black or not. If it was black, they'd cut it down for musical grade. If not, it would go over to furniture. You know, that world. I didn't know that. Oh, so yeah. not all everything's yeah. black. Uh, so is, it, is the white stuff not as desirable? It's not because the traditionalists have put such a tremendous uh, pressure on big manufacturers to get that jet black. I mean, people probably 25 years ago started dying. Does anybody ever make blonde ebony guitars? They started doing they, they have. Taylor's really jumping on that train. Right. Uh, I've, I have seen some, like, they call it moon ebony. But really all that is is cream mixed in with black and it looks swirly and awesome. Right. You know, they just made a sexy it's, name. It's 10 years ago, I saw the first appearance of that. I think mine with Taylor. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I'm not, I'm not sure. And um, mm. since then I've seen it once or twice, but going back 20, 20 plus years, you would have never seen it. Never. Wow. It's jet black or nothing. So right. what, is, what you, what, Wood, would you say, is responsible for this amazing smell in here the most right now? Without a doubt. Oh, Wh yeah. Which one? Which one is uh, it? It's probably the East Indian rosewood because that just came in the room three days ago. Okay. And, you know, coming across the ocean on a boat in a right. Connex box, it's going to have a little moisture on the plastic and all that. Right. So it's kind of almost like it's cooking off. Um, right. It's in this panel, too. Uh, probably the ceiling because we did not uh, finish the ceiling. We did do the walls. But we did want some of the pine exposed uh, to it take on the moisture. It smells like pine. Probably some of that. Because again, the room is only like six weeks old. Right. You, know, I mean, you know what it smells exactly like? You ever operate a chop saw? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you have yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, when you take a piece of two by four, yeah. and even if you have a great blade and everything goes good, and you make that yeah. chop, yeah. that smell that you have of cutting into pine on oh, a fast feed. This is it. This is it, dude. Come here, look at this one. All right. So AJ hates me to put on the pressure, but here it is. This is what we call the gravity bender, okay? One of the biggest things when we were making these, uh, the first 20 protos in another location is the cutaway side of the guitar is really hard to do in the old school, they're called Fox benders. Uh, they were breaking every two out of five sets, sometimes three out of five sets. So gravity and using a weight suspended at the bottom and, and again the formula or the schedule we'll call it heating the wood up to the right amount you know both sides having that 30 pound weight at the bottom I mean this is all trial and error what we did because you know we started off with this right here so no water no moisture just a little bit just spray it down that's yeah. it okay but we started off with this and we figured out this is 14 pounds and it wasn't enough the, the horn itself was not keeping that perfect shape around it. So we had to slowly go up in weight. We settled on 30 pounds. Thus, we bought a dumbbell for that. So that's okay. one side of the guitar. You that's one right. side, right? Correct. That's going to be the cutaway side. It's sandwiched in. Amazing. Man. It's sandwiched in. So we sand them down. Uh, that side's about 75 thousandths thick at this point, which is... 50 thousandths under an eighth of an inch. Right. An eighth of an inch is 125. Right. So let me ask you this dumb question, another, another one. When you see these like really cheapo guitars, like shit like like those Esteban guitars and stuff, how do, they, how do you bend wood for a $90 guitar? You know, uh, it's, it's hand done. It really you is. can hand yeah. bend, you can hand bend that. Um, I don't think you'd have the success that we're going to have because of how scientific this is and how much time we put into it. So all that shit, even the cheap guitar is still in there. Oh yeah. And it's just made in Asia. So they're, you know, yeah. instead of paying somebody a decent American wage, you know, they're right. paying them peanuts right. or... Right. AJ's getting a workout in. So this is something a lot of people will skip. How long does it take to do one side, bro? Oh. Uh. Three minutes, something like that. Um, so all this will be added up, and then, and then we'll the have the final we, figure and how long it takes us to hard, build. Right? No, 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 it's done. Uh, it's done in these presses. It, take, it takes about one minute. Yeah. One minute. So I've got it's night and day. I've right. got more time actually waiting for the blanket to get hot 
in both in both shapes than to actually get the side back. Now, how does it? Uh, oh, you call that that uh, metal thing the blanket? Yeah, uh, you got a this red is, uh, blanket uh, right there. Uh, I see. And I then see. the wood is in between two pieces of twenty thousand steel that's that it. actually transfers the heat from the blanket very evenly. That's how that's so that's it. Take it out. Yeah, and when you pull it off there, it it, it, re it retains the shape perfectly. Yes, uh, we'll let it get up to about 350, 375 the first cycle. We'll turn the blanket off and let it get back down to about 100, 110, it, and then turn it back on it, to 350 to, set, to okay. set the wood. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people do not do that for the reason of time, because it's almost doing it double time, right? Right. But what that does is when you heat it up a second time, it, it's going to maintain its new form right. better. I see. A lot of people, you'll see like Martin in the videos when they're bending nonstop, they literally just take it out and they put it under a, like a pipe to keep pressure on it so it doesn't move. Um, that's kind of like their way of right. hard casing so, it, if you will. So once these are out, right, and they're loose like that, if they're a little off, you can bend it into shape when you're making the guitar, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're just yeah. basically they're trying to get it enough, again, yeah. because they're only 75 right. thousandths thick. Uh, give or take, you know, about right. 5,000. That's the window of error. 70,000 right. is probably the lowest we'll use. 80,000, it'll be tough to, to get it through this. So we would probably send it through the sander again because mm -hmm. you've got to be around 76, 75,000 to, to get through this process right. of, of the cutaway. Okay. Amazing. So that that's probably the fucking hardest part of making the guitar right there. Yeah? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Without uh, that. What's the second hardest part? Probably the setup, making sure the neck, I mean, you can attest to that, making sure the neck is playable, like, the top's right. Like bracing, right. it's not hard, right? No, yeah, bracing. Yeah, can we show the back? Yeah, like, turn this in front of This is cool. Thing. So bear with us, we are still setting up, you know, moving stuff. We're, we're just about there. Um, this is AJ's creation. Uh, so, the old way to Brace your tops, backs, what have you, was either clamps, standard clamps, or what was called a, a go-bar deck. It was uh, a platen with a ceiling on it, and you'd use fiberglass rods or wood rods uh, pressed in between the ceiling and your top. So they would be putting putting pressure in various points on the brace. And that'd be coming from the ceiling? Right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. So, but you would still have the overall cure time of the glue. If it was an hour, two hours, 12 hours, what? You'd still have to wait that same, that same time. Um, I've, I've discovered vacuum is a much more even, much more uh, production-friendly method of gluing bracing. So, what we've got, we've got two valves on these plates, and the plates are the same radius that the top and the back will be. We get the top in, we'll open this first one, and it sucks the top in so that you can't move and makes getting the free radius brace on much, much faster, much, much easier. And then, once they're in position, take the platen, find its center, open this valve, and it draws out all the air, pulls the gum rubber sheet down, and clamps everything with the soul crushing power of the atmosphere. It's like the food press shit. What was that called? Food saver. Yeah, it's like that, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. But it, uh, it cuts our dry time down. Um, do it, yeah, yeah, do it. Uh, wow. so the, it feels uh, like a drum head. The uh, glue that we'll use for all the bracing is is a fish-based glue. It's very similar to hot hide glue that everybody raves over, but it comes pre-liquid. You don't have to heat it, and it behaves the same way that hide glue does. It self-clamps as it dries. It becomes very hard, and tonal transfer is superior to, say, top bond or other lock glue. And it's great on pancakes. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you're, if you're, if you're for it, I love it. All right. But the vacuum technology, as it's sucking down yeah. from the center, it's drawing out the moisture into these troughs. And as soon as it hits the troughs, under the power of the vacuum, it, it, it will vaporize. 
You said I this right? Uh, partly. Right. I've, I've seen I've seen right. various tools from other right. builders and just kind of thrown it all into one. Um, sure. But the added benefit of this with uh, the fish glue, you've got a 12 hour clamp time mm -hmm. doing it standard. And this you've got about a hour and a half. Sure. So it cut, it cuts it down. How many of these can you do today? Uh, <coughs> with just with just two running, hour and a half to eight hour, uh, twelve maybe. So but we're we, gonna have how many agents? Uh, we're gonna have ten start, uh, to start off, and then we'll just go up as as uh, uh, as needed. So I want I, I want twenty and twenty. To do twenty tops, twenty bags at a go. Uh, Eighty five thousand people watching this. You guys need any employees? Need any else? <laughs> <laughs> right now we're capped out, but okay. I will be accepting more applications here okay, in about two three right. months. Okay, good. What do you need a guy to do? Well, we'll fill in the gaps when we get there. I see. I see. All right. Well, yeah, anything else? This is fucking awesome. And they're cool. It's well, these are the guys, you know, yeah. for the for the groom model yeah. acoustic guitars that are coming out. These two guys are, uh, you know, yeah, man. two thirds of the right. overall yeah, operation with regards to hands on. So these are the guys, AJ and Jim, oh, yeah. are the guys um, building the instrument. Right the visual, yep. The, 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 yeah. My wife, she's in here. She does all the pre finished sanding on the bodies and the necks. Right. Yep. Gets that next you guys ever fight about that at home at night? Once yeah. in a while. Yeah. I, 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 mean, I can't believe the way you sanded it. <laughs> Actually, she's uh, she's very meticulous at it, and she doesn't like talking to people, so it's really good for her to just get in the zone, listen to her music, and sand away. Yeah, the dinner's um, fine, but uh, I can't believe the way you adjusted that neck. <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. One oh, of the uh, yeah. I might use 220 grit. <laughs> yeah, right. I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we are on the verge of, of really blowing up uh, production. I mean, we got a whole stack of tops and backs ready to go, pretty much sand the thickness. We're just tightening up, you know, our bender. Um, we're getting necks ready and prepped on the CNC machine out here. Uh, we've run singular at one time necks, but not four at a time. Right, right. You know, that's that's more difficult. Um, you know, we have the strategic goals set, and as we hit them, we will bring on more people right. and, and justify the business overall. Right. Have you had any weirdo Lebanon drifters try to wander in here? Oh yeah, without a doubt, I had a gentleman come in my the back the back fence yesterday, and he's like, he couldn't speak English. I, I said, no, no habla español. And he pulls out his phone, he starts talking into it in Spanish, and it talks to me in English. Right? It was crazy. And wow. he really, he was looking for a job. Oh, okay. And I felt bad for turning him down because we just aren't at a spot to take right. people on. I well, I told him, I said, hey man, three months, come right. back. Come you back, know? yeah. So, awesome, um, dude. Let's go. Dude, and we do still real. have people knocking on the door from the old business. Yeah. Because the guy was in a little trouble or something. Yeah. You know, financially. Because it's like, where the hell is he? And it's like, he doesn't live here anymore. Go yeah. away. <laughs> I wonder but, if you've um, racked up quite a bill in the like, Oh yeah. And people like the neighbors, yeah. they're always trying to pop in because they see all the trucks coming and deliveries and they're just like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. And now everybody knows we're doing guitars and we're kind of the talk of the square now. I saw you got a cool little grocery across the street. Oh yeah, 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 yeah it's real hip. Yeah, uh, that's nice. Dude, Talked thanks for uh, showing us this film. Uh, I, I wanted to see if he was gonna do a CNC run. You get a shot of the first one. We'll Dude. see if he's ready. Yeah, Let's do it. I can pause it. We'll do that in a minute.